Hi, in this video I will explain how we can calculate the EMF induced in an alternating current generator. In my previous video I introduced Faraday's law, which states that an induced EMF is equal to the rate of change of flux linkage. But we only really thought about a single loop of wire moving into and out of a magnetic field, and that's not a very realistic generator. Instead, let's consider a generator consisting of a loop of wire in a uniform magnetic field which is free to rotate on this axis. As it spins, the flux linkage changes due to the changing area perpendicular to the magnetic field lines. Therefore, an EMF should be induced. But how can we calculate this? With the coil vertical, it has a maximum flux linkage. When turned through 90 degrees, it has zero flux linkage because there is no area perpendicular to the field lines. The swept area, and therefore the flux linkage, changes sinusoidally, and we can use our equation flux linkage is equal to B A N cos theta to determine the flux linkage at any angle theta. When the coil is vertical and perpendicular to the field lines, theta is zero degrees, so cos theta is one, and the flux linkage just equals B A N. When the coil is horizontal, parallel to the field lines, the angle is 90 degrees. So cos 90 is zero, so N phi, the flux linkage, is equal to zero. If we rotate our coil at a constant angular frequency, omega, we could determine the angle at any time using theta is equal to omega multiplied by the time t. Therefore, the flux linkage is equal to b a n multiplied by the cosine of omega t. Now from this point on you need to make sure that your calculator is in radians because we're dealing with an angular frequency in radians per second. Faraday's law says that the magnitude of the induced EMF is equal to the rate of change of flux linkage. This means if we differentiate our flux linkage equation with respect to time, we should get an equation for the EMF induced in our spinning coil. Faraday's law says that the induced EMF is equal to minus one multiplied by the rate of change of flux linkage. This means that if we differentiate our flux linkage equation with respect to time, then multiplied by minus one, we should get an equation for the EMF induced in our spinning coil. If we differentiate cos omega t with respect to t, we get minus omega sine omega t. So our equation becomes EMF is equal to B A N omega multiplied by sine omega t. This tells us that the induced EMF also varies sinusoidally with a phase difference of pi over 2 or 90 degrees from the flux linkage. Let's apply this formula to an example. A 1500 turn rectangular coil with sides 1.2 meters and 3.5 meters long is placed in a magnetic field of flux density 2 milliteslas. It is rotated at 3000 revolutions per minute, beginning perpendicular to the magnetic field lines. Calculate A, the maximum induced EMF, and B, the EMF induced four seconds after it starts rotating. Reminder again, make sure your calculator is in radians mode because we're going to be working with angular frequencies. First of all, let's calculate out a couple of values. So our area is going to be 1.2 multiplied by 3.5 gives us 4.2 meters squared and our angular frequency omega is equal to 2 pi f where f here is 3000 revolutions per minute divided by 60 to get it into revolutions per second or hertz and that gives us 314 radians per second. Part A, when are we going to have our maximum EMF. Well that's going to be when sine omega t equals 1. So Emax is going to be equal to B A N omega multiplied by sine omega t equal to 1. So we can just say B A N omega. So substituting in our values 2 times 10 to the minus 3 multiplied by our area 4.2 multiplied by 
1500 turns multiplied by our rotational velocity 314 radians per second gives us 3.96 kilovolts and for part b the emf at four seconds will be equal to b a n omega multiplied by sine omega t so we can use our answer from part a 3.96 times 10 to the 3 volts multiplied by the sine of 314 radians per second multiplied by 4 seconds which gives us an EMF of minus 2.35 kilovolts. Finally let's consider the impact on our induced EMF of changing various factors. If we increase the flux density, the swept area of the coil or the number of turns this will of course increase the induced EMF. But What about changing the frequency? What if we rotate our coil faster? Well this will have two effects because omega appears in our equation twice. Increasing omega will increase the frequency of the induced EMF meaning that each cycle has a shorter period. But also notice that the omega is outside of the sine function so this will also cause the EMF to increase. This is because spinning it faster increases the rate of change of flux linkage so according to Faraday's law it must also increase the induced EMF.